This battery was almost forgotten, buried in dusty patents and ignored by modern engineers. It didn't explode, it wasn't flashy and it wasn't new, but it also didn't die. Because today, in the shadows of lithium's rise, it's quietly stepping back into the light. Zinc bromine, a chemical from the 1800s, not for phones, not for Teslas, but for something far more important. It promises safety without flames, simplicity without sacrifice, and endurance without cost. So why now? Why is this ancient design finally being taken seriously? Let's look closer. Because sometimes, the future begins with something we left behind. The Lithium Paradox Lithium-ion batteries have shaped the modern world. They power our phones, our laptops, even our cars. They're small, efficient, and, at first glance, unstoppable. But underneath the surface, there's a problem. Extracting lithium is brutal. It takes about 500,000 gallons of water to mine just one ton. That's devastating in regions already struggling with drought. And as demand for batteries grows, so does the price. In China alone, the cost of battery-grade lithium carbonate surged over 700% in just one year. That ripple hits everyone, from car makers to solar developers to everyday consumers. Then there's the issue of safety. Lithium batteries can overheat, they can ignite, and when they burn, they don't go quietly. Some fires last for days, others release toxic gases that force entire neighborhoods to shelter indoors. Yes, they're powerful, but they come with baggage. And recycling them? Still tricky, still dangerous. Despite all of this, lithium continues to dominate. Not because it's perfect, but because the alternatives haven't been good enough. At least, until now. A different battery is stepping forward. An older one. One that was never given a fair chance. Zinc bromine uncovered. Zinc bromine batteries aren't new. They were first patented in 1885. But for most of their existence, they've been overlooked. Too bulky. Too niche. Too weird. That's changing. At their core, zinc bromine batteries are a type of redox flow battery, which means they don't rely on tightly packed solids like lithium does. Instead, they use tanks of liquid electrolytes, one with zinc ions, the other with bromine. These liquids are pumped through a cell stack, separated by a membrane. As they flow, they exchange electrons through a redox reaction, creating electricity. When you want to charge it, the process just runs in reverse. It's a clever system. Want more power? Add more cells. Want more storage? Use bigger tanks. It scales in a way lithium never could. And there's something else. Flow batteries don't catch fire. Their electrolytes are water-based, non-flammable, and stable. And they can discharge down to zero without degrading. Zinc bromine is one of the most promising versions. It uses cheap, abundant materials. It stores energy safely, and it just might be the solution for solar and wind storage, if only someone could make it practical. Jellion Solid Reinvention Making flow batteries practical was always the challenge. Pumps, pipes, and tanks worked, but only at scale. Then came Jellion. This Australian company didn't just refine zinc bromine chemistry, they reimagined it. Their battery, called Endure, ditches the pumps and tanks entirely. Instead of using flowing liquid, Jellion uses a gel, a thick, stable electrolyte sandwiched between zinc and bromide plates. It's built like an old-school lead-acid battery, using the same casing and the same shape. But the similarities end there. Inside, it's something else entirely. There's no lead, no sulfuric acid, just a fire-resistant gel, zinc, and bromide quietly doing their work. Because of this setup, the Endure battery doesn't need active cooling, it doesn't need complex management systems, and it doesn't need to be custom-built from scratch. Jillian says 18 of the 22 manufacturing steps can be done in existing lead-acid factories. No fancy gigafactory, no billion-dollar investment, just a smarter use of what's already here. It's compact, it's rugged, and it's already being built 
a 137-year-old chemistry brought back to life without the plumbing. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Redflow's Flow System While Gilion reshaped the form, Redflow stayed true to the flow. Their ZBM3 battery is a classic zinc bromine redox system with liquid tanks, pumps, and all. But that doesn't mean it's outdated. Redflow leaned into what flow batteries do best, resilience and modularity. Their units are built for harsh, remote environments, places where lithium would overheat or fail. Telecom stations in the Australian outback, off-grid homes, industrial microgrids, each battery stores 10 kilowatt hours and is designed for full daily cycling. That means it can be completely drained and recharged every single day without damage. Try that with a lithium pack and it won't last long. The ZBM3 can operate in temperatures up to 45 degrees without external cooling. It also self-cleans through what Redflow calls a strip cycle, dissolving unwanted zinc buildup naturally. No technician required. In 2023, Redflow began mass production in Thailand, and later that year, they expanded to North America through a deal with Empower Energies. Their strategy is simple. Build batteries where the grid doesn't reach, where diesel is expensive, and where safety matters more than size. It's old chemistry, but it works where modern tech can't. Safety in chemistry. Safety is where zinc bromine quietly outshines lithium. Because when lithium fails, it fails hard. Thermal runaway, fires, explosions, a single damaged cell can bring down an entire system. We've seen it happen. Tesla Megapack fires in Australia and California. Each one burned for days, releasing toxic gases. Fire crews couldn't just spray water and walk away. These weren't ordinary fires. Zinc bromine avoids all of that. Its electrolyte is water-based and non-flammable. There's no risk of thermal runaway. Even under stress, the battery won't burst into flames. Jellion takes it further. Their gel electrolyte not only resists fire, but it may help suppress it. That's because bromine, oddly enough, is a natural flame retardant. The company even demonstrated a battery still functioning while scorched on a 700 degrees C hot plate. Vanadium flow batteries offer similar safety, but come with their risks. Vanadium oxide is highly toxic and it's dissolved in corrosive sulfuric acid. Handling and disposal are serious concerns. Zinc bromine isn't perfect. Its bromine component still poses health hazards if mismanaged, but it's stable and it stinks. It leaks easily to detect. In a world full of risky chemistries, that kind of quiet safety matters. Counting the cost. Zinc bromine doesn't just offer safety. It comes with a surprising price tag, a low one. Compared to lithium and vanadium systems, zinc bromine is cheaper across almost every metric. Raw materials? A 2017 study estimated vanadium flow batteries at around $124 per kilowatt hour in chemical costs. Zinc bromine? Just $8. Even broader system costs favor it. A 2021 analysis found zinc bromine batteries averaging $153 kilowatt hours in material costs far below vanadium at $491. And unlike vanadium or lithium setups, they don't need expensive HVAC, fire suppression, or custom-built enclosures. Jellion goes a step further. By using the same casing as lead-acid batteries, they avoid building entirely new factories. 82% of Endure's manufacturing steps use existing machinery. The cost to retrofit a lead-acid plant for one gigawatt year around $16 million. Building a lithium-ion plant of the same scale from scratch? About $130 million. Zinc bromine systems also skip the cooling bills. Both Redflow and Gillion claim their units operate without air conditioning, even in extreme climates. And when it's time to install, shipping and integration are simpler too. Less bulk, fewer safety concerns, lower engineering requirements. For long-duration grid storage, that kind of efficiency adds up fast. Real-life performance Zinc bromine doesn't just compete, it endures. Redflow's battery lasts over 4,500 cycles. 
Gellion's Endure is rated for 5,000. That's more than twice the life of lithium nickel systems. Even LFP cells rarely cross 20,000 or 100 cycles. Round trip efficiency is also strong. Gellion reports 85 to 90% RTE. That's right in line with lithium ion. And temperature? No contest. These batteries can handle 45 to 50 degrees with no external cooling. They're already deployed in deserts, remote stations, even fire-prone regions. No lab testing needed. No prototypes waiting for funding. They're running now, every day. Quietly powering towers, homes, and off-grid systems. Not because they're trendy, but because they work. Not for every job. Zinc bromine isn't a universal battery, and that's fine. It's too heavy for EVs, too big for your phone, and too slow to respond for certain high-drain uses. But where it fits, it excels. Long-duration storage, solar and wind buffering the remote infrastructure, rural electrification. It tolerates heat, abuse, and daily cycling. It stores energy safely for hours, even days. Dendrite growth is still a concern, but Redflow's strip cycles and Jellion's porous membrane both address the issue. This battery has limits, but it also has a clear role. Lithium will keep its crown in mobility, but zinc bromine doesn't want the throne. It just wants the grid. The future of energy won't be built on one battery alone. It'll be a patchwork, each chemistry in its place, each system doing what it does best. Zinc bromine isn't flashy, it won't win races or shrink into your pocket. But in a world that needs safe, long-lasting, affordable storage, it might be exactly what we've been missing. A 19th century invention, reborn for the 21st century grid. So, are zinc bromine batteries finally getting their moment? Or are we still too obsessed with lithium to notice? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.